Lawyers for some of the arrested members of the Democracy Hub raised concerns about a possible breach of the rights of the protesters. Exactly what are they talking about? We'll tell you why they, they hold this strong position and really how things have played out at least over the last almost 72 hours. A number of you have been talking about the, the inconvenience that the roads that have been blocked right from the 37 intersection all through some areas here in front of us here at TV3 to many parts of the Jubilee House. You cannot have access to it over the last almost 72 hours. Yes, it's created some inconvenience, but there is a message in there that the protesters wanted to send strongly. The streets leading to the 37 Military Hospital and the Elwak Sports Stadium where earlier today, uh, that's this evening, deserted by the Democracy Hub protesters after over 40 of their members, including the lead convener, Oliver Bakavomo, were arrested. Now, protesters failed to show up for the third and final day of their demonstration. Nonetheless, as heavy police presence to forestall any eventuality, the roads that were blocked from 37 all through the frontage of the Jubilee House has now been open to traffic as we speak. Uh, this evening, and so it's easing the, the seeming inconvenience that was created. But then again, we did not see any last day action from the protesters, and, and for good reason, because of what had happened earlier today. We would establish the information we got that two of the protesters were arrested earlier today when they showed up with the placards that sent some message as well of concern to the other protesters who were watching closely and how things played out. But let me just do a quick recall of what has been happening over the last 72 hours, almost 72 hours. Now, some of these protesters were arrested and others were picked up in, while in, in, in the action of protesting and bringing home that real concern about illegal mining, the impact of illegal mining on all of us. And they decided to hit the streets with that concern well, we've also been talking about it here. Take a look. I say go, go. Let's go. Let's go. To put in the food to be cooked, so she has come to fight for her rights. But Clean the, water. The police issued caution yesterday, and one they didn't talk to that me. They did not talk to me. Well, yesterday, they, they issued not, a statement. No has issued any, I have not seen it. They did not give me a statement. I have not seen any statement. I have not seen any statement. Mommy, what? Is it the rest of you know what? Are you face now? Yeah, come back tomorrow, then we also get something to. Okay. Bring them. Bring them. Take them to the mother.
So th this has been happening over the last almost 72 hours. In fact, these arrests you saw there some of the protesters happened for the most part of yesterday as we saw things playing out and then also on, on Saturday as well. Now, uh, we had information earlier today based on the police statement they issued that Oliver Bokamfomawo has been arrested. Prior to that statement being issued, we had contacted him he indicated he was turning himself into the police. So would reconcile the two positions as we heard as to how he ended up uh, at the, in the hands of the police as we speak. But based on the uh, information we have from some sources within the protesters, they say that these protesters who were arrested between Saturday and Sunday have been spread across a number of police stations. And we understand it's a strategy by the Ghana Police Service. So this is what we do know. These protesters, some of them are being held at the cantonment police station. Others are also being held at the Tessano police station, some in Sukura police station. Some have also been sent to the Dansuman police station. Others are also being held at the Nima police station, OEB police stations of the protesters have been sent there, the railway police station. According to the, uh, the, the leadership of these protesters, they say also that based on the information that we have so far, the, the Railways police station, they have them there. The ministry's police station, the Westland police station, some of them are being held there as well. The Legon police station, Ayimensa police station, some of them, are, these protesters were arrested, have been sent there at the Braka police station, as well as the Jamestown police station. The, all these police stations, we understand these protesters who were arrested between Saturday and Sunday, and, and today, as a matter of fact, have been sent to these police stations, as you see there. Thankfully, we have Noah. Noah Damte is a leader of the lawyers for these protesters who have been arrested. He's joining us in the studio. Noah, I uh, appreciate you. Counsel, thank you for joining us here on Ghana tonight. Yeah, thank you for having me. Now, let's establish this. We got information earlier today that two of the protesters are, were arrested earlier today, correct? Yeah, yeah, two were arrested today. So that brings the number to how many, as far as you do know? Yeah, so we know there are about 46 people arrested currently. 46? Yeah. The police says 42. Yes, yeah, so at the time the police mentioned 42, um, the two people who were arrested today had not been arrested yet. And between the 42 and then the last two people to be arrested, there were two other persons who were arrested. So that four added to the 42 the police mentioned earlier brings the number to 46. 46. So the police station that I displayed on the screen, is it consistent with the information you have that these, your clients have been spread across all these police stations? They are being held there as we speak? Yes, yes. But um, there are, I think, a couple more places that yeah, were, were uh, not uh, mentioned. Additional police yeah, stations? Yes. Yeah. So Which police stations? So we know there is um, a couple of people at mile 7. Mile 7 police station? Um, Usu. Then we are informed Adenta and then Medina. I yeah. see. I don't know if you displayed, uh, you displayed Dan Suman. Dan Suman, yes. Uh, we, we have that on the, on, on the list that we have. Okay. Yes, there's Dan Suman in there. I think Dan Suman is the fourth okay. on, on the list that we have okay. as well. So that brings the number to almost, almost 20. Yeah. Almost 20 police stations that they've spread these protesters arrested across. Yeah. Now, have you been able to reach them? So that, that's been the major issue we, we've been facing since the first arrests were effected by the police. Mm. So we know, we are not informed of the specific places um, the arrested persons are taken to. So we go to the regional command, as a regional headquarters, and we are basically left on our own to move from police station to police station, trying to find these people. So there are about only 13 to 15 people that we have been able to get notice of where they are actually being kept by the police. So for those people, we visited those police stations. And as we get there, we, we, we face situations where the station masters or the commander at the police station is unwilling to allow us to see these people because according to them, there is an order from above which says that um, no lawyer or any person is allowed to to have access to the people. There's an order from above that they should not have access to legal counsel. Yeah, unfortunately. But, but that's, if what you're saying is anything to go by, that's, that's, that's illegal. Yeah, yeah, so we, we, we've had that exchange with them, but 
Um, most of them also appear helpless because they, they say the order from above cannot be disobeyed by them. That the order from above is that what? The, the protesters who have been arrested should not be allowed to speak to you, the lawyers. Yes. And even in some cases, um, some of the um, commanders will tell you, we cannot even know their names. The, the, the funny thing is that there are places we have been to where we are told there is no one being kept here. Even though we've been informed from the regional headquarters that people are being kept there. So there, there are places you get even different information from different police officers. And what we are informed is that we are not supposed to tell you whether or not someone yeah. is being kept here. I see. So, but then how did you get information about the 13 or 15 that you were able to identify that they were in police station A or B because you indicated that they, they're denying you access to your client? Yeah. So for... Some of the people, especially the, those who were kept at Jamestown, um, Adabraka, cantonments, we were fortunate enough that when we went to those stations, the police officer in command was willing to tell us that we have two people here or we have one person here. Right. And he, he allowed us at least get to know the name of the person. But he can't allow us to have conference with the person. So you have to stand um, behind their counter and then just scream to have communication with the person. Mm. Just ask the person how you are doing and then basically does it. Yeah, so, and unfortunately for most of these people, they were asked to write their statements even before they will, they will be given access to call a family member. But for lawyers, they, they are not entertaining any communication between these people and their, and we are their lawyers. They, they are going to be arranged before court tomorrow? Yes. And you haven't been able to speak to them? Yeah. So what charges are they being preferred, or, or being preferred against them yes. ahead of tomorrow? We, we don't know. We don't know anything about, about that. So we will all get to know that God willing tomorrow, tomorrow in court. But, but that's irregular, is it not? I mean, if for you as a, as a lawyer to a client, you have no idea of the charges being leveled against your client. You only get to know of it in court. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely... Is there, is there a regular pra practice? No, no, no. It's absolutely unconstitutional. And, and clear violation of police procedure. Because according to the law and the practice of the police itself, at the time of arresting a person, you must inform the person of the reason. And the person must also be informed of their right to counsel at, at that time, and even before they are charged. And after they are charged, you have to inform them of the reason for, for the charge. And you cannot even take a statement from such a person if you've not informed them of their right to counsel. So clearly from the time of arrest, so now that they are even in detention, there is absolutely no regard for the constitution, the laws of Ghana, and even the police procedure by the police officers. See. But do you know the courts they are being taken, they are going to be taken to tomorrow? No. So in the morning, we, we were at the regional headquarters and we spoke to the crimes officer and some other police officers. Then they said they cannot tell us the, um, the courts they will be taken to. So we will have to figure that out for ourselves. So you have to come through the whole of Accra? Yeah. To so, know the courts that they'll be taken to? Yeah, so we have to um, adopt a strategy to know where they will, they will be brought and then try to represent them when, when they are called upon. It could be possible some of them will, will, will go through or go to court without legal representation? Very possible. As it stands now, they are going to court tomorrow without legal representation. Yeah. That puts them at a disadvantage. Yeah, and, and, and what even is more scary is that there are some that we do not even know their names. You know, some of the protesters were picked up without the leaders of the protest group even knowing their names and their whereabouts. So this morning I was at one police station trying to find out whether any of the protesters had been brought there. And someone shouted from one of the cells that I'm part of them. I see. And there's someone who no one knows is in that particular mm -hmm. station. So it's sure. possible that he's not had access to family, mm -hmm. aside lawyers, and may go to court tomorrow without any representation. And, and, and with this, what we're seeing on the screen right now is Oliver Bakavoma. Yeah. Because of this incident, yeah. he decided to get into the police van and doing what he did. The police issued a statement today that he had been arrested. Yeah. He said he turned himself into the police. Was was the current state of affairs with him? Yeah, so um, I think somewhere around 1 p.m., 
um, we got the notice that um, Oliver Bekavomao had voluntarily um, gone to the police station, that is the regional headquarters, to turn himself in because the police had issued a notice that they were on a man hands for him. Mm -hmm. So he had already stated that he was available to present himself to the police if they need be. So he turned himself in. So it, it wasn't as though Oliver was arrested somewhere when he was trying to evade arrest. No, he turned himself in and personally in the company of his lawyer. I, I see. You, you issued a statement asking for some demands. You, yes. You're asking some questions of the police. Yeah. What were those? And, and, let's, and if that is if you've gotten any answers so far. Yeah, so we, we've not had any answers from the police so far, but our questions were basically to know the names of the people who, are, who have been arrested. We want mm -hmm. a list to know their names and then their whereabouts. Right. Which stations are they being kept at? We also wanted to know the courts, the charges possible that have been brought against them. And if they are being arraigned in court, the courts where they will be arraigned at. But unfortunately, we, we, we've not been able to get any um, response from the police. Noah, uh, uh, thank you, counsel. Thank you for joining us here on Ghana tonight. And then tomorrow, if you get that information as well as to where they are being, going to be taken, as in the courts where they'll be taken, we'll certainly will be there in the interest of our viewers as well to get to know what is going to be happening. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Noah Adamte is the leader of the lawyers who are representing these protesters of the Democracy Hub who were picked up between Saturday, Sunday and today. Um, are being held at almost 20 police stations as we've counted so far. They're expected to be arraigned before court tomorrow. Uh, Noah Adamte is a private legal practitioner together with his lawyers as well who are going to, in fact, they say they're going to comb the whole of Accra or the courts to find out which courts they're going to be arranged. And then we'll also get you some information as and when we get it. This is Ghana Tonight.